Imagine this. A doctor sits across from a family in a hospital room. The air is thick with tension. The family braces for the worst, but instead, the doctor says, we know at a molecular level what's causing the illness, and we have a treatment designed just for you. This isn't science fiction. It's reality beginning to unfold thanks to the power of genomics. And the journey to this moment is as revolutionary as the breakthroughs themselves. But let me take you back, not to the beginning of genomics, but to the beginning of my story. I grew up surrounded by a belief that problems are meant to be solved. My dad, an engineer, faced tough challenges head on. My mom, a physician, was devoted to healing. And my sister, a biotech pioneer, made the impossible possible. In our home, we never asked, what if? But always, why not? Growing up in this environment, from a young age, I dreamed of creating technology that could breach science and humanity, solving problems that truly mattered. This dream crystallized years later in a biology class at MIT, where Professor Eric Lander held up a copy of the Nature magazine and declared, the first human genome has been sequenced. By 2003, the Human Genome Project had mapped over 90% of the genome, our DNA blueprints, a monumental achievement that was completed over 13 years at a cost of 2.7 billion. For the first time ever, we could see diseases as errors in life's code rather than unsolvable mysteries. At that moment, in that class, I fell in love with genomics, not just as a science, but as a tool to solve some of humanity's greatest challenges. After finishing my undergraduate and graduate studies at MIT in material sciences and engineering, I embarked on a career in genomics. I became the youngest product manager to lead a revolution in genomics by making DNA sequencing affordable. In 2000... <laughs> In 2013, I led the launch of the first DNA sequencing platform that reduced the cost of sequencing a genome from billions to $1,000. Now, this first revolution wasn't just about affordability. It was about accessibility. Genomics became accessible to physicians, families, doctors, and more. Doctors could now classify a tumor based on the specific mutations leading to tailored effective therapies. But the first revolution reducing the cost was just the beginning. The second revolution was about speed. To make genomics clinically relevant, timelines, they have to align with that of patient care. Sequencing a genome once took years. But during my career, I helped develop technology to reduce that to hours. For patients that are dealing with aggressive diseases, this can mean the difference between life and death, leading to faster diagnosis, tailored treatments, and saving more lives. The third revolution is perhaps the most transformative one, the data revolution. One human genome creates on over 100 gigabytes of data. Multiply this by millions of people, and we're dealing with petabytes of information. It's a huge challenge, but also an extraordinary opportunity. Over four years ago, I transitioned from genomics to cloud technologies to help lead this next revolution. Today, with cloud computing, artificial intelligence, and machine learning, we can combine genomics information with imaging information, with pathology reports, and even real-time health metrics from wearables. We're no longer seeing patients as these isolated data points, but we're understanding them as interconnected system. This comprehensive view is paving the way for truly personalized medicine. For over 15 years, I had poured my heart and soul into leveraging genomics and data to transform human health. I always refer to the patient as this imaginary individual. But two years ago, that mission became deeply personal. 
The anxious family in that hospital room was not a distant image. It was my own. And the patient receiving the life-altering diagnosis was my mother. Glioblastoma, the most aggressive form of brain cancer. In that moment, everything became intensely personal. The abstract became tangible. The stakes were no longer about advancing science. It was about my mom's life. Genomic sequencing didn't just give us a diagnosis. It gave us a roadmap. It revealed the specific mutations and chromosomal changes that define my mom's cancer's molecular profile. By combining data from MRI imaging with insights from genetic testing, we were able to intelligently evaluate clinical trials and access options otherwise we wouldn't have had. Today, I'm happy to share with you that over 35% of cancer therapies are genomically guided, and over 50% of drugs in development are driven by genetic insight. So I stand before you not as a scientist or a technologist, but as a daughter filled with gratitude. My mother is here with us today in the audience. We don't have a cure for her cancer yet, but the power of genomics and data has given us something precious, more time together. This journey has revealed a profound truth, that the code of life doesn't define us, it empowers us. Every discovery, every sequence, gets us closer to a future of healing, hope, and possibility. Imagine a child born tomorrow who will never have to fear a late-stage cancer diagnosis because their genetic risks are mapped and managed before they can even speak. Picture a world where rare diseases are solved not suffered, and a health system so intelligent, so proactive, that it prevents illness before it even begins. This future isn't decades away, it's within reach, but it requires action. We must agree that every life, regardless of wealth or geography, deserves our science, our resources, and our imagination. <laughs> that every family in every hospital room, like mine, deserves the same answer, the same hope, and the same chance to fight. The next chapter of genomics won't be written in labs alone. It will be shaped in classrooms, in communities, in policy rooms, by those bold enough to ask, what more can we do? The code of life is in our hands. Let's be the ones who ask, what more can we do? and build a healthier, more equitable world for everyone. Thank you. Yeah.